prerequisite model. You first have to map your particular core, core mathematics requirement to degree programs. Um, Larry mentioned earlier that a lot of institutions are algebra for all institutions. We are not an algebra for all institution. Um, the first thing that has to happen is you have to decide which, which mathematics experience is the right experience for certain majors. And college algebra may not be it. In fact, if college algebra is the only mathematics requirement for your majors, you really probably need to look at that. The reason you need college algebra is because you have students who need to do calculus, and so if they take college algebra, that shouldn't be the end. There are some other mathematics courses that you might want to consider depending on your, your particular degree programs. So we, we have three core math classes at our institution. There is there's the college algebra path, students can do statistics, and then we also have a quantitative reasoning type of course. The types of students in those three paths are usually um, the algebra calculus path or for STEM majors, statistics path, primarily social science, um, and our quantitative reasoning are primarily arts and letters folks. So once you decide what your math core looks like, you then need to figure out, for our students that come to us underprepared, they need to select one of these paths and we need to provide them some support. The co-requisite model that we run at Austin P is a zero credit co-requisite model. It's, it is very much like a science lab in the way a credit is, is given. The students do not pay tuition for it, nor do they generate a, a credit hour for it. So it's not a financial aid issue. They do pay a lab fee, which in, in our institution is a $75 lab fee. Um, and that fee covers some of the cost of deploying that program. Um, the rest of the cost is recovered in the retention rate that improved immediately from 10% to 70%. So it's, a, it's an investment. Um, did, did, that get, did that get enough on the co-rec model? Is that where you were interested in going? Okay. And you are welcome to contact me if you want to talk more about that. Um, I can give you lots of information about the co-rec model. You can come visit us and see it in action if you wish. Um, in terms of what can, what can a commission or a governing body do in order to help campuses move forward, I can tell you two things. I, I'm at a campus level, but I can tell you some things that influenced us to make some different decisions and to explore what we needed to do. Uh, the the co-requisite model was one of them. Our, our governing board shown a, really put a light on what was not happening in terms of our at-risk and our developmental students and kind of pushed us into a corner of discomfort where we had to internally examine what was going on. We were not, um, there, there was a grant opportunity for campuses to reinvent and redesign developmental studies and we wanted to be part of that, especially once we realized what we're doing now is completely broken. So anything we try, will improve. So we were willing to give anything a try, and, and we did. We tried two things before we landed. So the ability to try something new, uh, we, we, were, we would not have been able to do that on our own because of the previous uh, the structure. So we were encouraged to do something new. Um, in terms of advising, I don't know that our, our governing board has given us any push on how to specifically do some advising except we're talking about it. So we haven't had any policy yet on, on advising and student success, but I think our campus clearly sees it's the next step because we've been actively engaged in course redesign. We've been actively engaged in, in at-risk and developmental and re remedial education. We've been actively engaged in pathways. And so clearly the next issue is helping students make choices, and that happens in an advisement process. So I think um, there's not a specific initiative, but it's very clear that that's the next thing that we need to spend our most time on. Anything else? All right, thank you. Um, so I would like to encourage you guys, I'm sorry, I said thank you in the new book club, no, I'm talking. <laughs> you guys today to uh, talk to Loretta um, also about the um, process of faculty and staff engagement and all the work that they've done at Austin P because it's genuinely impressive um, and the leadership 
skills and practices around institutional stakeholder engagement. Um, as somebody who works across the country on these issues, is probably the most impressive I've ever seen. So it's worth learning more about that as well.